Do you know what I would like the the real reason to be? What? Aliens. Okay, let's roll. There's one of the most evil, vicious Navy bases in the history of the planet. They do stuff that would make k look like Santa Claus. That's where that first Malaysian plane is. That's where it landed. It had four scientists on it, huh? Twenty scientists, but four had filed for patent. It was Malaysia, but they worked out of Austin, Texas, for Texas Instrument. And the ones behind that plane was Texas Instrument, the government, and Boeing, who made the plane. And everybody is stupid enough to believe that a plane almost a block long can just disappear. With the electronics we have, all the technology we have, so we got four of those top scientists that had filed for patents for yeah. four of these. Hmm. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Godspeed Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Guy. And I am Dan Eats Everything. How's it going, buddy? Oh, it's going great, man. Uh, I've been missing a lot of sleep lately. Yeah? Uh, Catching up on it there, bud? <laughs> no, it's just like I don't, I don't, I don't know what you mean. I haven't slept in a very long time, it feels like. Not, not like 20 minutes ago? Definitely was not sleeping 20 minutes ago. <laughs> okay. I okay. listen, Joe. I just want to say I, I don't think it's very professional for you to miss our record times. Also, you know, um, you know, for the 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 the, I guess you're the leader of this podcast. You come up with all the the topics and you do the editing. You, I mean, you're the you're the guy who makes it go. For you to miss the deadline is r- pretty unacceptable. That's all, I'm just gonna put it out there. Yep, I was asleep. An hour and 40 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. Mm-mm. I've been up. Right. I've been up waiting I'll for take you. It. It's fine. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Good. Uh, so what do you want to talk about today, buddy? <laughs> uh, you know. You just got random shit up there. Hey, that's the one. Oh, is that the one? Yeah, I think that's the one going down the California <coughs> coast. What do you want to okay, talk about? Okay, well, you know. Uh, so we're going to talk about MH370, which is a flight that went missing. Now, originally, this episode was supposed to be done the beginning of January. I remember. I got flaked out on. Then it was going to be done the week of like uh beginning of april i got flaked out on listen again. i want to put it on record i was awake for both of those record times oh yeah no okay you're not, uh, talking, you're not talking about me flaking all right no, so, I just yeah, so, sure no, so i was so i was supposed to hang out with this chick and i was like oh do you want to be on one of the episodes and she's like yeah and i was like okay well you choose which episode you want to be on and uh, i'll just gather evidence and we'll I'll I'll make it work. Right. And she chose this stupid MH three seventy, flight three seventy, uh, and so like I scheduled the time with her, and then she she sends me a video of like the she's a nurse, so this hospital floods, and she sends me a video of like water dripping down and like there's water all over the floor, and I'm like okay I get she you got to stay later that's fine, I get it she have to move all the patients and whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah, she like totally like flaked out on me, which which I understood that time. Job, jobs happen. If, if that happened. And then, so I go to the fruit festival, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I do my thing. I don't really talk to her at all. Like since then. And then I'm like. I'm hurting for like I'm not hurting for episodes, but I'm like trying to think of what episode to do. And I'm like, oh, I can call her to see if she wants to actually do the episode Mm because she said after she didn't show up the first time that, oh, yeah, I definitely want to do it. I'm like, all right, cool. And I've known this. I've known her since like 2006. So, you know. Anyway. Um, And uh, so I text her. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally down. I talked to her the night before. 
And then the next day she doesn't respond at all. Like, why the fuck are you even talking about wanting to do it if you're not going to do it? I don't get it. Is it me? Is it, is it me too crazy to think that, like, why talk about wanting to do something if you're not going to actually do it? It doesn't make any sense to me. If you don't want to do something, just say you don't want to fucking do it. Right? Am I wrong? I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the math. Give me, give me a second. Do what math? Carry the, carry the one. Yeah, I'd say if you don't want to do it, just say, nah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm fucking nurses, man. Actually... The first, the first, the only time that a woman um, ghosted me because of Flat Earth, she was also a fucking nurse. Yeah. She was all about me. Like, all about me. I met her at a beer fest. This is when I drank. And uh, a coworker set, a coworker of mine set us up. And she was all about me. And then, you know, we... First time we met, like I said, she was into me. Trust me. And then we went on a date. She was into me then. And then I was telling her about Flat Earth. And I went to Texas and I was at the Avid Brothers concert. And she didn't, like, when I was in Texas, I was like, hey, do you want to go out again when I get back on this date? Blah, blah, blah. And she didn't say anything back. Like four or five days later, I'm at the fucking concert. And she finally texts me back and says, hey, I, you seem like you want to be in a relationship. I'm not there. I'm like, okay. I messaged her back. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I understand. That's fine. Okay. You could have just texted me and told me that. It's fine. Right. Um, and then, like, a couple months later, I'm talking to her, one of her best friends, and her best friend was like, yeah, she was really, really into you. She just couldn't get past the flat earth. And I'm like, why the fuck didn't she just tell... People are such fucking cowards and i know you're not supposed to call women cowards no they're both they're fucking cowards like just fucking tell me how you feel and we're good fucking nurses i have really bad luck with nurses no more nurses (laughs) you got (laughs) you got bad luck with nurses too uh (laughs) so uh you have (laughs) you have way worse luck with nurses than i do and i apologize (laughs) No, man, that was that was. Well, I just put my foot in my mouth there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh shit! Uh, not all nurses are bad, man. Not all nurses. All right, my my rant is over though. That that kind of ended badly with that. (laughs) Everybody's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" You probably don't want to enlighten anybody, right? No, I'm good. Okay. If they know me, they know me. (laughs) For sure. All right. Uh, so yeah, we're talking about MH (laughs) MH MH370. Uh, oh, shit. so really today funny. i'm not like i said i i i had this episode ready so we're going to do the episode uh, i'm going to go through a bunch of different conspiracies about what is going on with this and then at the end i want you to tell me which one you think is the real thing that happened to it obviously we don't know what really happened to it i uh, do because there's a bunch of conspiracies no, i do there. i know i know so you know about this flight then uh yeah back when you told me we we're going to do the episode I, I looked into it a little bit Okay. So you don't want me to go through all of them? You just want to tell me what you think? Uh, no. <laughs> did you look all into it, or did, did you not. just find one that you thought was good? Yeah. Like, ah, that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, no, I don't know anything about this, Joe. What, let's. Uh, I'm very interested to find out what you're talking about. <laughs> Fucking liar! <laughs> um, brought to you by cherry free, sh- cherry sugar free Coca Cola. Just because we lose the sugar doesn't mean we have to lose great taste. Thanks, Coke. We are not sponsored by Coke, and I don't <laughs> think we ever would be because it's fucking poison. <laughs> All right, so here's here's the story of MH370 if you don't know what we're talking about today. What is it? Malaysia Airlines flight MH370, a Boeing 777-200ER, took off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport on March 8, 2014, destined for Beijing Capital International Airport. On board were 227 passengers and 12 crew members. The flight was expected to be routine, 
but it would soon become one of the most baffling mysteries in aviation history. The aircraft took off at 12.41 a.m. local time. For the first 38 minutes, everything seemed normal. The plane communicated with air traffic control and followed its planned route. At 1.19 a.m., as the plane was transitioning from Malaysian to Vietnamese airspace, the Kuala Lumpur Air Traffic Control Center radioed the crew with a handover message to Ho Chi Minh Air Traffic Control. The co-pilot responded with, Good night, Malaysian 370. This would be the last time anyone on the ground would hear from MH370. Shortly after the last communication, at around 1.21 a.m., the plane's transponder, which communicates with ground-based radar, was turned off or failed. This meant that civilian radar could no longer track the aircraft. However, military radar continued to track MH370 as it deviated from its planned route. Instead of heading north to Beijing, it turned westward over the Malay Peninsula. That was it. <laughs> so yeah, the plane disappeared, you know. Nobody knows what happened to it. Um, one of the Wait, one of the main knows. They just told you what happened to it. It deviated from its route. Yes, and then disappeared. And then just disappeared. Yeah. It didn't say that in the video? Did no. I miss that part? Mm -mm. Yeah, so it just disappeared. That was the last time anybody heard of it. It just disappeared. That's the that's the thing. That's that's why it's a conspiracy because nobody knows what happened to it. They've never found the plane. Um, Have they looked in the ocean? Yeah, that yeah they did a bunch of searches and um, you know uh, the the first theory we're going to go into is that the pilot apparently had something to do with it. Um, people think that he nosedived into the Indian Ocean. All the communication was turned off. After they switched over to tra air traffic, con after they switched the air traffic control over to, uh, um, you know, the other fuckers, <laughs> the other fuckers, um, and a lot of people are saying that he, the pilot wanted a career change. There's other people saying that he was having marital issues, and then there's like he had like a simulator, and like apparently he like simulated the flight. That flight route a bunch. Was he married to a nurse? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Uh, fucking nurses. I don't care. Nurses don't watch this anyway. Most nurses, no, most nurses believe uh, the the pandemic was a real fucking pandemic. So, you know, what are you gonna do? You know. I don't think I don't have anything bad to say about nurses. I don't have anything bad to say about nurses. <laughs> Did I say bad things about nurses? All right. So the main theory is the the pilot did it, and here is a video uh, corroborating that story from the media. Yeah. Gentlemen, was the disappearance of MH370 an act of God or an act of man? The disappearance of this aircraft was an act of man. Without any shadow of a doubt, this was controlled by a professional pilot who knew a 777, and he also knows the airspace around this area, and he used them to best effect. If Captain Zahari was intent on committing suicide, why would he fly the plane for another six hours? To make it disappear. Simple as that. He was taking it to a predestination, some place that he had planned to take it, and he flew that six hours to get it there. That's, that's, uh, that's why he took it where he did. Why the strange move around Penang here? The turn around Penang is a very odd uh, turn, which um, I spent a long time thinking about it, technical reasons. Why has it got three turns instead of one? Why hasn't it gone directly over Penang? Um, eventually, I equated it to a maneuver I was doing uh, when I was flying over Australia. Um, when I get to Ayers Rock, I used to ask the air traffic control for three miles right of track due Ayers Rock. And so they'd approve it, and then I'd do a right turn. I'd tell the passengers, anybody who wants to take a look, can do so. And then when we got a beam Ayers Rock, I turn back in a slow turn, just exactly like this. Turn back, let people have a look at Ayers Rock, take some pictures, 
and then I turn back the other way, back on the route. As we know, now know, um, the captain was from Penang. So your conclusion is that he was having Somebody a was looking out the window. A sentimental look at Penang. Yeah, I think somebody was mm. looking out the window during that turn. I can't see any other reason for it to be uh, in that way, the three turns. And not only, was it, not only was it deliberate, it was pre-planned. I think every maneuver, every turn that was made in there was something that was pre-planned before the flight ever left the ground. I think that, that all of this pre-planned, the turn south is pre-planned, the destination is pre-planned, the whole thing is, is carried out according to a very deliberate plan. What, uh, what do we think has happened to the passengers at this point? The thing that, that, that gets discussed the most and probably most people would tend to start to agree with is that at the point where the pilot turned the transponder off and made the turn to go in a different direction mm -hmm. that he depressurized the airplane and which would disable the passengers, they would develop hypoxic conditions, maybe, maybe they would succumb, uh, at the very least they would be uh, uh, incapacitated and I think that if, if you go down into your deep thoughts you think that's probably the most likely thing that the pilot would do given his intention to make the airplane disappear and not wanting any interference from the back or any anybody using cell phones or anybody trying to call people. And is that one of the reasons why we assume that the plane was depressurized because there was no contact? I don't know that we can assume at this point. There's just not enough data. But it's it's a scenario, it's an incomplete hypothetical when you really look at it. Obviously it's one that the families of the victims are desperate to know. Yes. Yeah. If I had loved ones on that airplane, I would want it to be true that at the very initiation of this wild ride that this airplane went on, that the pilot depressurized the airplane and eliminated the, the people from the back as, as an issue. There is no reason not to believe that that's what the pilot did because that would be consistent with everything else that the pilot did. And I would be comforted in thinking that that's probably what happened. Do you think there's any chance that if MH370 is ever found, that the narrative around the captain might be different, could change? I think all that we've got sufficient evidence to conclude at the moment is that this event was the result of deliberate action by someone very familiar with a 777 aircraft, a pilot very familiar with a 777 aircraft. We cannot take it any, at this stage further than that. But when you if look we locate the aircraft and find flight recorders, cockpit voice recorder, unless there's been a major effort which would be yeah. very difficult uh, to destroy them, then you'll get some, some further evidence and you will get some evidence that might help establish what I do not think is yet established, which is questions of intent. So biggest issue here is that it's on 60 minutes mm -hmm. and they have a group of group of experts telling mm -hmm. us it was the pilot. It was the pilot. There's no reason to believe it's not the pilot. Right. <clears throat> so that's one. That's like my main thing is like. Yeah, come I, on. I, yeah, I, you know, those make it a little indigestible. I would agree. Would you say indigestible? Indigestible. Yeah, I can't digest this bullshit malarkey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nonsense. Yeah, it makes sense to me. You're, you're you're making total sense to me, dude. Here is the pilot's daughter saying that the news is a bunch of fucking liars, basically. A daughter lashes out at a British tabloid that uses her name to cast doubt on her father's mental state. Aisha Zahari's father has become synonymous with flight MH370. Captain Zahari Ahmed Shah, the pilot of the missing flight. According to the Daily Mail article, a family friend quotes Aisha Zahardi saying her father wasn't the father I knew. He seemed disturbed and lost in a world of his own. Captain Zahardi is among many being scrutinized during the investigation into the plane's disappearance. Investigators searched his home and poured through data on his flight simulator, but no evidence of wrongdoing has been found. His heartbroken daughter is incensed and says the article is flat out false. On her Facebook page, she posts an open letter to the Daily Mail saying, 
quote, you should consider making movies since you are so good at making up stories and scripts out of thin air. May God have mercy on your souls. You can bet your ass I will not forgive you. We have reached out to the Daily Mail and are awaiting comment. As Zahari's family aches from his absence, they have shied away from media attention, and they say all the attention and suspicion surrounding their father is, quote, torturing them. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Kuala Lumpur. CNN, so, you know. Anyway, uh, so that's the pilot. The, the mainstream media story is the pilot. Most people believe the pilot killed them all and committed suicide. Flew over his hometown to wave. Come on now. Come on now. And then there's a hijack theory. Uh, one dude says that it's hijacked. I mean, there's just probably more than one dude, but this is the guy saying it's hijacked. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Even though it might <laughs> torpedo my reputation, I felt like I had to go public. I had to bring people's attention to the problems that this plane possessed of vulnerability. He thinks it's possible Russian hijackers sent the plane north. Do you really think it went to Kazakhstan? Well, it's not something I believe. It's just a hypothesis that I've pieced together. I went on TV and it was scary. I felt like my ass was hanging out the window. What kind of reaction are you getting from this theory? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot to swallow, I, I grant uh, you. Are you getting calls from people saying this seems realistic, yeah, or it. what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Comment sections, yeah. a lot of people are outraged, people are furious, some people are very angry at me. Nobody goes into the e and &E Bay, reprograms the BFO, lands in Kazakhstan. I'm intimately familiar with how that satellite system works. As are a number of my colleagues, and we're absolutely certain that the plane turned south and not north. It was surprising that Jeff decided to take off on this route. I was correct in thinking that I would get a frosty reception from some quarters. The independent group, which had staked its reputation on the idea that the plane went south, did not want to brook any opposition from me. They kicked me out. Jeff's work, in my opinion, is simply a fiction that he has woven and convinced himself is feasible, but it's all based on fantasies. It's not based on reality. Yeah, so um, people that think it was hijacked is because they, they think it was like... Uh, because of the Malay like someone against the Malaysian government, like uh, as a political act, um, but there's no real, there's no real evidence other than that guy saying that there's evidence, and I couldn't find any actual evidence to support any of his theories. The only thing I found interesting was that everybody that said that it went south and saying that the pilot did it, they kicked him out and didn't want him saying his theory about it going north. So usually when people are trying to hide shit like that, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually when they try to hide it, that's where you found the body. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and then there's also a, a theory that it was shot down by, on accident, supposedly, it was shot down by governments. Um I couldn't find actual evidence to support it actually being shot down on accident or on purpose. Yeah. But it has happened a couple other times um, with other planes where they accidentally shut it down and then they try to cover it up. Mm -hmm. um, should I play those videos, even though it has nothing to do with MH370? Up to you. You can just play them for the audience if you want. Okay. I, I understand the theory, you know. Yeah, yeah. Here's a here's one of the videos. 
The United States Navy once shot down an airliner carrying 290 civilians. In 1988, an Iran Air A300 took off from Tehran and was destined for Dubai, but sadly, it never made it. Shortly after the flight stopover, when it was flying over the Persian Gulf, it was hit by two SM-2MR surface-to-air missiles fired by a United States Navy guided missile cruiser. Tragically, all 290 lives on board were lost, and the two governments involved, Iran and the U.S. dispute the reason for the shootdown. The U.S. claims they misidentified the A300 as an enemy F-14 that was on its way to attack. They also claim that they made 10 attempts to contact the aircraft, both on military and civilian frequencies. Iran says the A300 was transmitting IFF squawks in Mode 3, which would identify as a civilian aircraft instead of Mode 2, which is used by the military. And the U.S. later paid $61 million in compensation to the families of the victims. In my eyes, the U.S. has absolutely no excuse for this tragedy all right uh so pretty fucked up you know yeah yeah um and then another theory is that it was they had uh they actually did have a fuck ton of lithium batteries on board um so some people think that the lithium batteries caused the explosion and in the cargo bay and then the plane went down because apparently there was sightings that the plane was on fire up in the air, but there's no, I couldn't find any proof to that. Okay. Um, but there was eyewitnesses that said it, but again, who knows? Eyewitnesses could be telling the truth. They could right. be lying. Who knows? Um, but uh, here's, uh, here's what I, uh, lithium batteries can do. This YouTube video shows how quickly lithium batteries can fuel a chain reaction. In 2006, fire forced a UPS plane to make an emergency landing in Philadelphia. Investigators found electronics containing lithium batteries in the cargo. The pilot survived. And this is what was left of a UPS plane after it crashed in Dubai in 2010. The Boeing 747 was carrying 80 to 90,000 lithium batteries. A chain reaction fire filled the cockpit with smoke. Both pilots died. Following the UPS crash in 2010, the FAA wanted to tighten the rules on battery shipments in cargo planes too, even classify them as dangerous goods. Industry groups and lobbyists fought back hard. The final compromise approved by Congress in 2012 blocked proposed tougher federal rules on transporting lithium batteries on planes, instead relying on international standards set by the UN. Randy K, CNN, New York. Yeah, so it could have did it. I mean, they're fucking unstable. So, well, I got lithium batteries to take to uh, the Philippines when I go. So that's gonna be fun. Check to see if you can even take them. You can. You can. <laughs> All they right. Just, they have to go in the in the cabin. They can't be stowed. Okay. You know. Yeah. Yeah. For obvious reasons. Right. Yeah. All right. I'm taking my drone <laughs> with me. Reasons. So. Um okay. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Let me get some good drone shots of the Philippines. Man, I should bring my jo drone to Germany. <clears throat> you should. Have you flown it much? A few times. Nice. Okay. Right, this makes perfect. Huh. Yeah. 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 Okay, so those are the, the those are the three main theories. Those are the bunch of theories, and then there's this theory. This video has no sound, so we can I, just talk talk it through. Okay, you talk it through. Do you know what there? You know what theory this is? Is this the alien theory? This is the alien theory. So this this Did video. Did you see the little black thing in the sky? Did you see it? Did you see it just there? This video popped up mm -hmm. four days after. On Reddit, four days after the plane went missing. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what's that? What is that thing? Oh, what are those? Maybe government technology. Mm. So people think that those are UFOs um, mm -hmm. surrounding the plane before it disappears. Um, but who's, <coughs> who's, who's, who would be shooting this? Who would be shooting the plane like that? Uh, the government, maybe? The government, yeah. Right. 
Why would they be shooting the plane unless they knew something was about to happen to it? Exactly. Right. Um, now, I, you know, if you watch the show, you know I don't believe in aliens, but I 100% believe in UFOs. Because I don't think they're unidentified flying objects. I think they're government flying objects. Right. So, um, but if you believe in aliens, maybe you believe this theory. This is the theory that I thought you would go for. Um, you know me so well. <laughs> but I have my own theory. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah, this this is the video of the, the UFOs, and they just... They circle around it, and then all of a sudden the plane just disappears. Like right. they're creating like a portal, maybe, or something like that. That's oh. that's the predominant theory on that yeah. one. Um, do you want to keep watching till the end? Got yeah. like two more minutes. It's up to you. It's the same thing that keeps happening. It's yeah. It's this, um, and then um, nothing. Yeah, it's really weird though, and I think that's um, what's different from those things oh. than the other videos of quote-unquote ufos that we have seen from the government is those those things that are surrounding that plane have a a heat uh whatever it's called sensor no um signature showing where there's there's some heat coming off those and any, any of the like more recent ufo footage there's no heat coming off at, off of these things like they don't fl- okay they don't fly like out. there is no like if they're using batteries or uh, a fossil fuel to per- project or propel itself like our our flying objects do um you would see that heat signature coming off them but the the ufos that we currently have like the tic tac in san diego and the things flying in um off the atlantic shore or atlantic coast um there's no heat signature coming off of them so we have no idea okay. how they're moving the way they are <clears throat> well the the peasants yeah the peasants of the world has have no idea how they're moving the way they are yeah my yeah. you want to know my theory well we got one more oh i'm sorry i thought there were only three my bad go ahead oh no we've we've already gone through more than three. Oh, all right yeah, i'm yeah, asleep yeah. still i can't count <laughs> you know anything uh, if, if you watched our um gamestop video i know nothing you know more than you you're letting on Mm-mm. You know, say nada. Whatever you said, bud. My, uh, <laughs> our Spanish speaking followers will know. I will Google it. All right, here's the last theory. The CIA doesn't want you to know that this island exists. It's called Diego Garcia, and it is located in the Indian Ocean. In 2008, Time Magazine published an article about the island of Diego Garcia, stating that it is where the CIA takes all its detainees to torture them. But they also believe that the CIA conducts experiments beneath this island. Have you heard about the Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 that disappeared? In reality, this flight may not have vanished. It landed there, and they abducted the people from the plane and subjected them to torture. The reason we might might think this is because there was an IBM employee on the plane who posted a photo 10 days after the plane's disappearance. The photo showed what looked like some sort of experimental room. And if you look at the geographic coordinates of the photo, it matches this island. So I actually have the um, Time magazine article. And it does talk about... Um, I'm not going to read it, but if you want to pause this and read it, it talks about how the CIA was using that island for experiments and shit. Um, and so the Time Magazine article, the Time Magazine article is a real article about that island that the CIA owned and operated. And then this is the actual um, coordinates for that guy's picture. That's not the picture down there. But that, that's the coordinates for the picture. I looked everywhere to find that picture. But the, so the theory is that this island, they brought the plane there, unloaded the passengers and used them for MK Ultra mind control, tortured the citizens. And that plane was switched out because there was another plane like uh, Malaysian Flight 17 or something like that, that also crashed and they used MH370 for that plane's remains or whatever. Um, when they found it in the ocean. 
So, um, yeah. Now, what's your theory on what happened? Uh, what was the plane again? Uh, the one that I was just talking about? No, no, the 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 plane. What was the make this and model? One. MH370. What was the make and model? <clears throat> oh, a Boeing. Mm, anything going on with Boeing lately? You tell me, bud. You, oh, you're not up on the Boeing stuff. Dude, I'm I'm out of the news. Oh, okay. Well, they've had <laughs> a, a bunch of issues with their planes, and uh, one of their whistleblowers mysteriously committed suicide. So Boeing Boeing is having uh, some issues lately, and I'm assuming this shocker falls in line with that. It makes okay. sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Probably, I mean. They probably had some issues and just exploded over air, but who knows? Or was repaired so over there? Yeah, that's my. That's, that's what my you theory. think happened. That's okay. my theory. I think it. Was, I think, think it was brought to Diego Garcia Island, and they really used the the CIA used the passengers on the plane, and then they just switched out the plane for that other plane. And yeah. I mean, I, I could see that, like especially if that photo does exist and was really posted, and the, at that yeah. those coordinates, that's that's a lot of evidence showing that. But who knows? But who knows? But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. play the numbers here because I like to play uh, most or most likely case scenarios, and Boeing isn't holding up their end of the bargain as far as delivering good products, and there's reasons to that. I'm not uh, I'm sure you can look up some theories as to why they're not delivering, um, but for a, a whistleblower to just commit suicide. Yeah. Well, no, that does no. That's yeah, I feel so bad but about also, telling the truth. <laughs> but Boeing, uh, <laughs> but Boeing also that could have been uh, um, that could have not had anything to do with MH three seventy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but I one hundred percent don't believe it was the pilot because that's what the media is trying to tell us it was. Right. Right. So that immediately fucking throws it out the window for me. Got to be honest, I. Uh, <laughs> I have no fucking faith in the media at all. So, plus the daughter's public comment on Facebook, like she's telling, yeah. she's saying that's not what I said at all. So, you know, why are you making up stories about the daughter? And right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. Well, we agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> we agree that it wasn't the media's story. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's and actually funny thing. I uh, the our the person who's supposed to be a guest that's what she believes is that it was the pilot hmm. well yeah would have been a barn burner <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah uh well yeah we don't have to get back into that yeah. um mm-hmm. yeah so okay well you know there's an episode down <laughs> <laughs> sorry if this wasn't as entertaining because <laughs> i'm not passionate about the subject at all i could you know, it hey, sucks that people Let, died, but uh, I don't you know, care about this. Do you know what I would like the the real reason to be? What? Aliens. I would have loved for it to have been aliens. You could still believe it's aliens. Eh, eh. <laughs> I was I was totally off. As soon as I saw the heat signature on those uh, UFOs, I knew you it knew wasn't it was aliens. CGI. Yeah. Okay. Or something. Yeah. Plus, you make a great point. Why? Who would be recording that? Plane, like who just goes outside and records planes? You yeah, know, with uh, highly technical uh, cameras that have heat signatures yeah. on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also talked about a few episodes back uh, about the human trafficking that was going on on a UFO like mm. object where the that the government government oh, yeah. agents came out and they like took care of all these other fucking marines and shit did you ever watch that video i sent you i did not you never said it yes i did oh you sent the whole video i thought you were gonna send me a clip you gotta watch the whole video it's a how long is it uh i'll watch it i'll watch it i i I got so much time on my hand i'm gonna be on a fucking 11 hour flight soon you better download some stuff (laughs) yeah Yeah. for real for real yeah all right okay all right buddy well so we don't have the same theory, but, you know, dude, Boeing is fucked, so who knows? 
Who knows? Yeah, I won't. I won't book a flight. I know if I know Boeing made the made the plane anymore. I wonder who made my plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too high of a frequency to die, so I ain't dying. Why you look like that? Huh? Why you look like that? What do you mean? You like look around like how are, uh, you could die. I ain't dying. Ever? My frequency's too high to die, so maybe if my frequency dipped. Alright. Well, let's not dip dip potato chip, buddy. Let's keep it high in the sky. Up near your for thigh. For sure. Alright. For sure. I'm getting that for sure. <laughs> Alright, bro. <laughs> well, Godspeed. Godspeed. <laughs> You've reached the offices of the Godspeed podcast. We are currently closed. Please leave your information and someone will return your call within 24 business days. Thank you. So, when the plane crashed, the sharks had a good meal and they're all swimming around burping of people. <laughs>